Hello, skateboarders. Welcome to TSM Live Show, Season 5, Episode 8. I'm your host, Tommy Zam. This episode guests are Greg Valencia, Chris Krusty Wiseman, and musical guest Star 2. You guys ready to get this show started? Let's do this. Let's bring on Greg Valencia. Hey, hi, hi. What's Respect, up? Tommy. What's up, dude? How you doing, I love man? everything you're doing. Hell yeah, G. You too, Carl. I think uh, TSM is very unique, and I want to be part of some shit that's unique. That's Hell all yeah. I got to say. There's no podcast like uh, TSM. That's right, brother. It's the truth. So how you been, man? How was your trip up? Uh, lovely. I uh, had a little pit stops. I didn't want to stress on time or nothing, so I made sure I did what I wanted to do before I came here. And, and you came from LA, right? Uh, Long Beach. Long Beach. Oh. So I was in Long Beach, and then uh, I made sure to make enough time to do what I want before I got here. Okay. Even if that was like uh, drinking a twisted tea at the Oceanside Pier. <laughs> That's what I did. Oh yeah. Yeah, I learned at a late age to not stress on fucking time. No, oh, definitely. I grew up fucking stressing on that shit for too long. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. So as I'm older, I'm 33 years old. Oh, uh, you're 33? You don't I'm 33, look, yeah. You don't look 33. I don't, uh, thank you. My parents look great. They're like the youngsters that are old as fuck. Both of them. <laughs> anyway, uh, I made sure to do what I wanted before I came here, but I respect what you and Carl do. Like, you guys have a unique podcast. and. It's a pleasure to be here. Hell yeah, thank you so much. super serious. Definitely, definitely. Well, I watched your shit, you told me to watch your shit. And yeah, yeah. It's unique, you got your commercials, you got the, you got something good, I like it. Thank you, thank you. You're and a and, and little, bit, little bit back to your past, I mean, what got you into skateboarding? Like, was it like a family member, uh, was it friends? I think it was like, uh, it was like uh, my, uh, my parents had like friends and they had like a kid named Steven. Mm -hmm. So he came over one time and he had like a skateboard, AV, he had the whole lifestyle. And uh, he's like, yeah, like I skateboard now and like I use a skateboard. And I think me and my brother like looked at him like he was like, it's like, whoa, like that's what we need to do. So yeah. I just remember looking at an individual, my friend, Steven Dominguez, shout out Steven Dominguez. I just saw like, he had the vans on, he had the skateboard, he had everything. And I was just like, this is it. Like, I got to do this. Yeah. He's, he seemed so comfortable being in that position. He was a unique, uh, he was his own person. That's what happened. So, yeah, I just saw like my uh, family friend, like the kid. Was like, oh, I skate. He had like a shorty skateboard. He had like vans on. I was just like, this is it. Yeah. I started skating after I saw him. I wanted to be him. Yeah. Oh, it's your shit. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck is this? Nah, we're good, we're good. Uh, I got inspired by a family friend. Okay. He doesn't skate anymore, but I've reached out to him and I'm like, yo, like I do A, B, and C now, but like I only do this because of you. Yeah. He doesn't even like fuck with skateboarding anymore, but really? that's the beauty of life, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. People will put you in a position that you got to take over. Mm -hmm. And their position is to put you in position. Yeah. That's a real thing. So. Hell yeah. And did you grow up in Long Beach or did you grow up somewhere else? I grew up in Las Vegas. Okay. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'm like a dude. desert fucking kid. Oh, yeah, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. What was it like skateboarding in Vegas? Uh, it's cool. Like, you need something in Vegas or you're going to get caught up in some bullshit. Yeah. So my skate, like, skateboarding was like my little outlet. It sounds so corny and no, cliche, no. but it's like... Skateboarding literally saved me from like doing a bunch of weird shit in Las Vegas that I've seen a lot of people do, let alone my brother. Yeah. My brother's an inspiration. I love him, but like, you know, 
but yeah, like Las Vegas. I was born in LA, La Mirada. Okay. Uh, I grew up and picked up a skateboard in Las Vegas. And I've been out in LA for like 13, 14 years. Shit. But uh, I got to thank the desert. Yeah. And it but there like- was a day like in the desert when I was growing up, mm-hmm. I had an epiphany. I was like, you get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Vegas was about to eat me up. Yeah, yeah. But I had one day where I was like, you got to go before you get eaten up. I didn't get eaten up. Yeah. But I've seen people get eaten up out yeah. there. I'm no better or worse than anybody, but I'm thankful that I got out. Yeah. Before, but like I can go back to Vegas and I appreciate everything. It took some time, you know. Yeah, that's Anyways, awesome. I didn't mean to go off too much on Las Vegas. But. Nah, nah, you did good. And then you made that, and then when you made that loop to Ve- from LA to Vegas. I mean, it's like, I literally woke up one day and I was like, dude, you're fucking up out here. Mm. I told the person I woke up with, she was like, I feel you. And I literally left the next day. My life changed. Once I left, <laughs> we get so uh, comfortable with situations that aren't so positive to us. Yeah. We need a slap in the face so we can fucking get out of that <laughs> shit, right? No, you definitely do. I know what you mean by that, man. I, mean, I hope we're not talking too much crazy shit on your fucking. No, you're, <laughs> no, you're doing great, man. I told us, I was like, dude, do not say some fucking crazy shit. No, you're doing no, good, we're good. Bro. All right, you're good. All right. You're doing good, man. All right, fair enough. No, you're definitely good. And then, like, so do you remember, like, going back a little bit, do you remember your actual first board? Do you remember what kind of board it was? Exactly. Or? I do. Because my, my mom, like, God bless her, dude. She, like, worked enough to, like, uh, she took me and my brother to a skate shop. And my brother was so into skating before I was. So we got, like, budget-ass boards. But he was like, yo, this looks like an alien workshop. So you have an alien workshop. This looks like this brand so i have this brand it was budget shit but yeah. like my my brother was kind of like you know our mom took us here let's pretend we have like proper company yeah. skateboards but if i were to look back they're probably like proper but like um i remember it was uh, all downhill in las vegas my mom like took me and my brother to get like a complete skateboard and you know she's a single mother so like she just got us like the completes that were like affordable yeah but my brother was like he was so into skating he's like yo you have an alien workshop i think there was like even a fucking alien head on that board oh. but it wasn't an alien workshop board oh okay my bro was just like yo you have an alien <laughs> he was like trying to pretend that we had like cool shit yeah when we didn't <laughs> But you gotta respect that as no. a single mom, like trying to buy you, like, damn. No, no, definitely. I probably man. put her in the hole when she bought us fucking those two complete. <laughs> I swear to God. She was like, oh shit, what's going She's on, like, man? Fuck, like, I hope this works out. Yeah. It's starting to work out. <laughs> Thirty-three. And then so like. Like, grow, like growing up in Vegas, so you had a skate shop that you went to. What was the skate shop that you went to all the time? Uh, so we, like, we didn't know too much. So we, like, were going to, like, whatever skate shop was presented. But we started to know someone that went to the church that we attended. Mm-hmm. And he was, like, the owner of Sub Skate Skate, like, Sub Skates. Okay. That was a big shop in Las Vegas at one point. Mm-hmm. So that motherfucker attended the church that we went to. Yeah. And he would throw like uh, church events, like, dude, looking back, it's like, whoa, he was doing so much. You're a little kid, you're just like, oh, like, what can I, you know? Yeah. But, um, so Barry, I hope he hears this. He's in Huntington, he has mm-hmm. a whole family. Sub skate skateboards, like, or sub skate skate shop. But, like, uh, that was like the one shop we felt like at home. So we'd go, like, every other shop, like, to, buy what the fuck we needed and my mom would always buy us like bank boards because they're like 35 bucks like yeah. a single mom you know but barry would like take care of us and we met barry at the church we attended mm-hmm. in las vegas okay does that make sense yeah that makes sense 100 percent. did i answer your question yes you did all right <laughs> i don't know and so like you know, going from Vegas to Los Angeles, 
it's such, it was like such a big culture shock, or did it feel like you were at home when you came to Bay, Los Angeles, like wa walking into that? So my mom presented Las Vegas and this whole life to me earlier, but I was so young. I like I was such a big fish in a small pond in Las Vegas. Yeah. So maybe my ego was like, you need to go to Vegas. Like you're the dude. Like to the point. Um, I just like stopped wanting to go to Las Vegas. I was like, the more I was in Los Angeles, like more was happening. Mm -hmm. You're you're such a young kid and like you're accepted somewhere. You kind of want to go there, yeah. Even though like it might not benefit you. You're so young. You're just like, oh, I'm accepted here. I want to be here. Yeah. But the more I broke that mold in Los Angeles, like life started happening for me. Yeah. And I was supposed to be in Los Angeles. It's like. I don't have my name on a skateboard. I don't mean to like jump too much, but it's like, dude, like I'm a skateboarder at heart. Yeah, and you kill it, dude. I, I mean, will be here. There's There are people that skate and there are people that are skateboarders. Mm -hmm. I like to think I'm no better worse than anyone, but I'm a skateboarder. Yeah. So I'm not tripping on certain things, but as I've gotten older, I've wanted to care about certain things to the point things are happening for me in the skateboarding industry because I wanted to care. Yeah. They don't look too good not caring as you get 33. Oh, you, you look, look good. Like, it's not a good look. <laughs> you got to start caring at one point, right? You got to start caring. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You nah. look like a fool. And, and you gave us a video. Carl, you got a great smile. What's up? <laughs> and he gave us this video. Tell us about this video I'm about to watch. Oh, this video, it's a mixture of uh, Holyfield. That's my buddy Michael Bell's uh, video. Like, I love Michael Bell. He has the biggest heart. Um, so I want to say this here, but like, um, so a lot of like full length videos in skateboarding, it's like a homey vibe. Like you feel the vibe. Yeah. No disrespect to Michael. Michael hears me, but Michael is such, he has such a big heart. He just brought a lot of people that he connected with. We might have not connected with each other. Mm -hmm. But like Michael has such, he brought a bunch of skateboarders to like have a whole full length video. Yeah. And you can tell it's like, dude, we don't hang out. Yeah. We don't hang out at all. <laughs> but you, you watch a certain video and you're like, dude, they all hang out. They're all friends. This is a vibe. Yeah. And that's I a, love, that's a, I love Michael Bell because he brought a whole video that people might not have fucked with each other. Yeah. But he still brought it together. And he's like, no. You might not like him, he might not like you, like da, 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 that pop. But he's like, I'm still bringing this whole video project together. So to elaborate on your question, Holyfield is cool. I was going through a lot of transitions in my life filming Holyfield, and mm -hmm. that's Michael Bell's video. Yeah. I feel like I was on top, like I was like, I was like, I was like going for it in the beginning. I got into uh, certain situations in my life at the end of Holyfield, but Michael still brought it together. So to elaborate, I gave you a, a mixture of Holyfield and I gave you a mixture of uh, my rec part. Okay. So I work for like uh, my my wheel sponsor. It's okay. called Rec Wheels. Okay. Super low key. One of the best wheels ever. Okay. You know how I skate, right? So I yeah. power slide. Yeah, you These kill. motherfuckers never flat spot. <laughs> really? I know people like like all we like, we never flat and they flat spot. Yeah. I flat spotted Spitfires. I flat spotted Bones, but Bones like uh, they roll themselves out, right? Yeah. So I respect the Bones. These motherfuckers do not flat spot. If they were to kick me off, I'd have to buy them. But so I uh, I work for a, a, my wheel sponsor. Okay. So I gave you a mixture of Holyfield and Rep. Okay. That was my promotional part. And there's talks of uh, Jason Thurtle. He used to ride for like blind skateboards. Mm -hmm. So me and Jason will have like our own signature wheel with Rep. Oh, sick. But to elaborate with what I gave you, it's like Holyfield and it's like Rep. Okay. I'm more confident with like the Rep part. Holyfield was like, I was going like life with, you know, 
if you know somebody like and they have like a video part like you can tell like their struggle within life through their video part yeah. if they're a skateboarder does that make sense no 100 percent. i know what you're saying so if someone fucking knows me like they'll watch holyfield and they're just like they're just going through it <laughs> swear to god yo but wreck was like i brought myself back out of that fucking black hole i don't want to talk about too much about my personal no, life yeah, but yeah, like yeah. that wreck part like i brought myself back out Hell so yeah. I associate and I get like flow from like FA. Yeah. And they acknowledge the, the rec part. Okay. I was in a better position in my life. It's like skateboarding takes such a mental toll. Like, yeah, it does. Personal life can fuck your whole skate shit up. Oh, it does. Oh, he sucks now. It's like, motherfucker, he's going through it's, the shit. It's, it got so much shit going on. You don't know shit. Exactly. You got to know everyone's story before you fucking try to say some shit. Exactly. You ready to check it out? Anyway. You ready to show the whole world it? I feel like I talk so much. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Play that shit. <laughs> Play that shit. Hell yeah, dude. That was a dope ass video, man. That was sick. It's a mixture. You don't gotta like it, but this is my thing. It's like, I can't promise you'll like it, but I can promise you've never seen anything like it. Dude, it was dope, dude. It's not ego. Fucking it's just clean like, tricks, everything. I go dude. out of my way to just like try to do something different. So. You, know, look, you know what? It looks like you're having fun skateboarding. That's it's all good, matters. Yeah. Just having fun skateboarding. It's funny. You know? As I get older, like the way I skate, it's like, it's been laughed at. Dude, I, I'm not even gonna call names, but it's like, I think it's more appreciated now mm -hmm. than it was prior. Because I think like skateboarding is coming to like this trip. It's like, what else can we see? Like, what's new? Like, da da da. Yeah. Even age with people like in the skateboarding industry, like age doesn't matter. No. I mean, you got T Bone still shredding. You got Steve Cavallaro still shredding. Fucking Tyrone is here. Yeah. That's, and that's it, too it, much. And, and he's still shredding. That's Tyrone. <laughs> yeah, look at this. I used to watch this motherfucker before I could kickflip. So weird. He's like hanging out, like probably drinking more than me. God damn. Well, before we take off, I have a couple of questions. Um, so you said one of your wheel sponsors. Do you have any other sponsors that, that you want to uh, give shout outs? FA, okay. DC, Bones Bearings, Red Oh, Vern Wheels, takes care of you, huh? Jessup, Grip Tape. You got to understand, man, I'm 33. I told you that, right? Yeah. I started to care about everything at 30. So there's a lot of cats like, oh, he thinks he's good. Like, oh, like. Once I wanted something, it was at 30 and everything's been coming. Like I've known these FA cats like for 20 plus. Mm -hmm. I've started to come around and they've been treating me slowly, but like they want to, if you want to be part of this skate shit, dude, you got to show up. Yep. You gotta want to show people that you want to be part of something. For so many years, I didn't do that. Yeah. So 95, 93% of success is showing up. I didn't show up for 10 years. I'm just trying to say it's like, so FA, DC, all that. So I just want to give a major shout out to fucking FA, yo. Like, yeah. they're the best. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, they're the best. Best board shape, best everything. I hope Julian hears this, but like, 
They're the best, and I just want to represent the and best. And they come out with the greatest videos, too, man. Their videos Dude, are insane. they're the fucking best. I've known them for a while, but, like, I just, um, the more I showed up, the slowly they approached me, and, like, I love F.A. Oh, yeah. F.A., D.C., Bones, Rec Wheels. I work for Rec Wheels. Yeah. Jessup Grip Tape and uh, uh, Just Live CBD. Okay. That's Paul Rodriguez's shit. Yeah. Just Live CBD. And it, I want to say this too, because like uh, I was going through like the roughest part of my life, and I had Just Live hit me up. I had John Gardner at DC hit me up. Man, like that's sick. I was getting ready to throw in the towel on my fucking life last year, because mm. I was just going through my personal shit, yeah. and then certain things had me be like, Yo, Greg, just yeah, don't throw in the towel right now. Well, the universe had your back. That's what the whole thing. You know, the universe was looking back at you. And I like, feel confident Ooh. about it. And you had a lot of positive people in your life, man. But even for you to hit me up to be here, I'm just like, I'm doing something. Yeah. And I think, I think you and Carl, you guys are the shit, yo. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really think, like, you guys are like, like, look at this shit, yo. Hell yeah. And then one last question. What can you say to the upcoming skaters? Like, anything you want to say to Don't these guys? Don't give the fuck up. Don't give up, dude. Life's gonna fucking smack you to the floor. And it's for you to be like, do I want this or not? Right? Yep. I think every skateboard experience that fall where it's like, fuck, I just got fucking tossed. Like, do I wanna do this or do I do not? And the cats that are like, yo, I just got tossed, will continue, it benefits you. That's anything in life, dude. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's so true. So to the youngsters, just don't give up, dude. Like you're gonna have like the ups and the downs, but like it's all if if you're gonna stay strong right here, you're good. There's a benefit to it. Anytime you're fucking hitting the storm, it's because you're about to hit it. That's all I gotta say. That's you can edit everything I say. I know I was talking way too. Oh, it was great. Full of tipsy. It was great, brother. It was great. I loved it, man. And Greg, I'm man, fucked up right now. Fucking, I'm so stoked to have you on the show. You killed it, and you're skateboarding. You got watch your Tommy, stuff. you're a fucking good dude. <laughs> Carl, you guys are doing something thank special. Like, thank you. I thank feel you. like I can let. I feel like I just want to. Oh yeah. I, I want to promote it myself. It's like these guys do something great. I just want to push it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sure and enough. thank you for coming on the show, brother. Thank you, man.
What's up, Star 2? How you doing, dude? I'm doing good. How what? are you? Good, good. Thanks for coming on the show, Thanks man. You. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, finally get to meet. I know I know we did that little one-on-one podcast scene together, you know? Definitely yeah. was a good one. Dope. Hell dope. yeah. yeah. So, so you just got in town or, or what? Uh, kind of kind of just got back in town. Oh, yeah? So, um, I was on a little, like, show with um, an artist named Raquel. Okay. So we did, like, the West Coast tour. We went to... Sacramento, San Francisco, Arizona, and LA. So yeah, we did a little show now, we're taking a break, and then, yeah, we're about to do another one. Oh yeah? Like, back to school tour type thing. What? Hell yeah. yeah. Going to the schools, you know, high schools, middle schools, stuff like that. Okay, so will y'all do, do like a performance, or will y'all talk, or what? Uh, we'll be probably performing, like okay. lunchtime, you know? Oh, lunchtime? Yeah, yeah probably like that, yeah. That's so, the goal, though, you know? Okay. If, that, if that can't happen, then we might have to just pull up in the experiment van, <laughs> pull out some gifts, you know? Hell yeah, that's right. Well, let's go a little back on your past a little bit about you. So, tell us where you're from and a little bit, a little bit of history about you. Uh, well, I was born in a Thailand refugee camp called Melak Camp, and I was there for like five, six years. Then I came to the U.S. and then ever since then, I've always been in the, I've always been in San Diego. Okay. So yeah, I don't remember much about my the camp I was from, but yeah, back then. There was no lies, no like roads, basically dirt roads, you know, mountains, rice fields, uh -huh. trees, you know, all that. Basically, nature, the jungle. Yeah. That's where I was from, so yeah. That's awesome, man. I mean, not awesome, but I mean, I mean, like, so how did you get over here? I mean, did you like, like, uh, your family just said, hey, you know what, we're going to get out of this place, peace out, we're coming in, come to the States, or what? Uh, I came with my grandma. Okay. She kind of snuck me in because uh, no way she was uh, racing raising me at the time. So you know, she brought me along with her. I had to, she had to tell people that she was my mom. What? Oh, yeah. So, but she won a lottery. She signed up, and then, you know, she, she had a chance for us to come. And she, she grabbed the chance, and she came and took us here. Yeah, hey, that's awesome. Yeah, I like it here, you know. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to go back, huh? <laughs> So what, so coming from Thailand from a refugee camp to San Diego, what was it like? Did you have, was it a culture change? Something you had to get used to or what? Of course, yeah. I mean, yeah, man. You never seen like planes up close. You never seen like basically the city. You know, like ongoing traffic. Mm -hmm. Cause where where I was from is basically the road. You can barely see any cars. You know, cause places where only motorcycles or dirt bikes or whatever, yeah. those kind of vehicles can go through, you know, off-road vehicles. That was, that was about it. So, yeah, everything was new. They didn't know how to speak English. We we ate, our food was a little bit different, so there, there weren't too many, like, Asian markets at the time. Yeah. When grandma came, so it was cool. We got, we involved, and then we got used to the American food, too, you know? Oh, yeah. So looking, like, mixed. Our portrait dish and yeah, making this, uh, mix it up. Yeah. yeah. That's right, dude. That's right. And then, like, you know, how, and then that's how you came into music, like, more here in the States? Uh, yeah. Um, when I 
came out here, I started listening to like Justin Bieber, you know, like Chris Brown, all those new artists like Tupac, uh -huh. like those artists at the time that were huge, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, that's what motivated me to like start like writing music, start singing and stuff. So ever since then, yeah, man, after I turned like 17, then I took it more seriously. Okay, that's but right. That's why, that's why I'm here now. After three years of taking it serious, now I'm here. Oh, yeah. And, and how did you come up with the name Star 2? Uh, well, I've always wanted to be a star. My last name is H-T-O-O, -O, and it's pronounced 2. In my culture, in my culture, it means gold. Okay. So, but in, the, in English, it's, it's like number 2, you know, pronounced like 2. Uh, so I just said it's like star number two. Dude, that's rad, yeah, dude. That's, that's, that's rad, definitely rad. So at age, what, 10 or something like that, you started writing music or, or what? Uh, I started writing music around the age 13. Oh, okay. Like most, yeah. At 10, I didn't really know how to write. I was more like freestyling, singing along, like other artists, stuff, you know? So, so you're like jamming out some Tupac music and then you're just like oh, throwing yeah. your own lyrics in the back yeah. at 10 years old? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That was, that was how it was done. Hell yeah, dude, that's right. And then how do you put your music to, like, is your, like, what, what, how do you say your style of music is for hip hop? Is it more like, more like, like 90s, 2000s? Like, what style that are you trying to go towards with your music? I could do any, I'm versatile, you know? Really? Yeah, I could, I could do old school rap, or I could go modern day with full auto tune. What? Yeah. That's dope, dude. Yeah, I'd do some like big and small type stuff. And then change it into like and then do some little Uzi bird. Okay. You know, Travis Scott, like Travis, uh, music like that. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. That's, that's right. what the new generation like to hear, you know? That type of music. Yeah. Mostly. And that's what you're trying to more go towards, yeah, more yeah, new yeah. generation. Yeah, you know, fan base, then do my own thing. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. I mean you, you I mean I check your stuff out and your stuff is like dope as hell, man. Like you got some Great lyrics, good beats. I mean, what you do and everything. I love your music videos, man. One with, the, one with the girls in the pool. That was a dope oh, one. <laughs> hey, shout, shout out to Victor. I mean, Hector. Hector Tor. That was definitely a good one, He's man. A good one, you know? He shots all, he shoots all my music videos. And then you got a special guest with you too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. His name is uh, Hood Trophy Vino. He's, uh, he's uh, signed to SODMG, Soldier Boys record label. Okay. So he's Soldier Boys artist. All right. Hey, so we're going to bring him on? Yeah, yeah, hey, Vito. Hey, hey, where's Vito, Vito at? Get you, where's get where's Vito at? Oh, wait, there, there's Vito right there. So, <laughs> so tell us a little about you, Vito. Hell yeah, hell yeah. And, and where are you from? Oh, LA Live. And how, how'd you guys mix up? Well, it's cause you know I, I had a song. I have a song with Soulja Boy. It's okay. called New Me. Okay. Yeah. That's how I met him. So. <laughs> and then you two got have a song together too. Go yeah, right. Let's go. Tell us a little about it. Go. Trying to make, trying to make it like club vibe, but you know like with the kids too, you know. X games. Yeah, you know. So I like all we hear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool, cool. You guys ready to perform for it? Yeah, yeah we ready. All right, cool. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I say I'm a mama baby, but I'm a baby. Hey, hey. Set the hood on the same. I got two sides. 
Cause in the throne, I gotta stay up on it. Go buy your mom's a crib, like I say, that's the trophy. Expand your mind, yeah, be different from your homies. I hear Woody when I lose, so I really moan it. One on ones, it be like you really know me. Shopping therapy, me and one be on it. 1200, just a step on bitch, we want it. GT, cross my flag and free the homie. And I ain't got a total pistol, a bro, who told it. And if you get too close, you're guaranteed gonna blow it. Big bro say he got the streets, nigga, stay broke down. Yeah. Take three more for the boys, actually. Big yeah. shot over here. Is that what you do when you get the clip? You got it? I got it. You got it. I got it. Bundle the crack? No. Damn. No lady? Not today. That's <laughs> For those special times with special friends, make it look high. Boys? Now that you got that, you're probably gonna forget about us, huh? <sighs> probably. What's up, Krusty? How you What's doing, dude? Tommy? I'm doing all right. How are you, man? Ah, uh, just chilling, man. Just, actually, I just got back from Florida. I was out there for a year and a half, take care of personal stuff, but now officially home. I'm so happy. Sick, man. Hell yeah. And hold on real quick. You did a day in life with us, right? I did. Thank you for having me out for that. Dude, you ready really to check rad. this shit out? Let's watch it. Hell yeah. Dude, I would love to. here's Krusty's day in life. Let's check it out right here. My name's Chris Wiseman. Everyone calls me Krusty. I'm 28 years old and I'm from Simi Valley, California, but now I reside in Oceanside. I started skating at eight years old, 2002 in March, March 2002. So I've been skating for 20 years. I started out skating a uh, skate lab, it was an indoor skate park in Simi Valley and I would go there almost every single day. I spent a lot of time at Skate Lab growing up from eight years old to the place, to the time it closed down, January 7, 2019, it closed its doors and I was there for the last session. I think I got home at like three in the morning. I saw a piece of trash, I gotta get it. Look, a piece of trash here. They litter. Oh, can't find it now. Oh, it's right here. Sick, man. I haven't used fucking deodorant in like three weeks, dude. I swear. I just come here, like, barely even use soap these days. Like, just have fans, salt water, get it. Dude. I met all my childhood friends there Kevin Furman, Lyndon Lindsay, Gage Boyle, Alec Richards, Joey Nungary, Ricky Flores, like, we had a crew and we would make skate videos. We'd go out filming on the weekends and we would premiere it, usually at Skate Lab. And it was always a super great turnout. They always let us 
rent the place out and throw a premiere and I ended up turning pro December 2nd, 2018 at a video called Debauchery 2. Um, it was one of our full length videos. So Skate Lab was very responsible for me pursuing skating to where I get to where I am today. Thank God we're about the ocean. We're about to go to the hot shit too. YouTube comments are gonna be like, dude, this fool is not about to skate with those feet right now. But I am. <laughs> and I don't really mind it. Yeah, a lot of dudes, a lot of riders are like, what the fuck, dude, I can't skate after that. I got rents. Let's fucking get this shit. like bubble gum. Go, go, go! Yeah, yeah, yeah! Hit it! Dude, hey, wait, wait, wait. One time, I was fucking driving down this street and freaking Milton Martinez gap nose blunts a picnic table right as I'm passing. And he landed it. The roar of the fucking crowd that... Dude, it was crazy. It was crazy. I, went, I was actually going to the place we're going to right now. You know, I was going to Walmart with my girlfriend. I, I was like, dude, I gotta go skate. Yeah, knows what. And in the footage, you could see the Corolla. I think he did it twice too. So I think it was the first one without the backside wall ride. He bailed the backside 360 wall ride, the one that I'm passing. Very sick. Oh, here it is. Oh, it's bumping. It's bumping. It's bumping. <laughs> This is my liquor scoreboard. Uh, it's really cracked. I like parking. I thought I was gonna get a free ride. Oh, you want one? Come through. <laughs> Place item on the scale. This one didn't have a sensor, so I'm gonna look up item. I gotta look it up. I gotta look it up. What's it called? It's a pear? No, it's a nectarine. Nectarine, which one? Yellow. It's gotta be yellow. <laughs> what are you doing? Have you ever skateboarded? Moving the other side? And then this was a nectarine. Select from list. <laughs> go, go, go. I want to go skate. Thank you, guys. Let's get in there. Let's go skate. Probably need this. Oh, hell yeah, dude. I'm the I'm the Monkey, monkey. Let's see it. No, oh, we don't know. <laughs> I didn't really see it. God damn it. Oh, skate classes. No. No skate classes. Let's get it. Oh my god, my parking spot's here. Bum bum bum! Neutral e brake vent park on an automatic car. Let's get it. Do you know any reason there's caution tape? Well, that's put a halt on our mission. That's crazy. This sucks. <laughs> how does that, wait, how did that happen? That's so gnarly. Ah. 
I thought it'd be bad if we had like skate classes. This is so much worse. <laughs> Go skate something else. <laughs> it like, dude, I love this hip and I love that nose blunt. The first time I could remember that I'm like, okay, I'm really part of this skate industry was uh, December 23rd, 2013. I uh, Kevin Furman drove me to Oceanside with James Martin. James Martin is a professional skateboarder from Camarillo, California, and he I always looked up to him a lot of. He influenced a lot of people in the Ventura County and he cruised up with us or down with us and we went to ATM Click Warehouse and uh, Kevin Fowl, he was a TM at the time and he asked me a few questions. We went out skating. I ended up switched big spin heel flipping this 10 stair in a line in Dana Point and that was the day that I was like, this is, this is on. It's on, you know, and I, I took it super seriously from that day on, 2013. December 23rd. From then on, it was full force filming, you know, like for a sponsor too. It wasn't just like go out with your homies, see if you can get a clip. Now it's like really work hard, you know. At that particular time, it was always uh, handrails, hubbas, stair sets, still kind of now, I was, a, I was younger, so I could take more impact. I was so super inspired by Zero videos, Baker videos, any of those videos that made you want to huck. I, w I wanted to jump, you know, I wanted to go fast and jump. And that's, that's where it came, I worked really hard. I sent three sponsor made videos to ATM. <laughs> I sent them three. And they would always write back, yeah, super hyped, super hyped. And then it was that day that I linked up with uh, James and we linked up and then I was flow. When I got on the team, that was gnarly. That was, my TM was Ronnie Bertino. And uh, Ed DeVera was heavily involved. And I remember when I got on, I was doing gnarly. I think I switched, I switched big spin board slid the ring con four block in uh, November, what day was it? November 23rd or something, 2014, yeah. Yeah, it was, November 23rd, 2014. I landed, switched big spin board side down the ring con block. And in the footage, you can look at my face and that was the day that I realized like, I just did something that's gonna change my life. I remember, I called my mom and shit. It was crazy, dude. Oh my God, yeah, that was insane. Let's go skate some ditches. We just pulled up to ATM Click and asked the Chemical Co, SOP Distribution. And this is one of the companies I ride for. Hey, this is it. Shapes, dude, look at this shit. Money bumps, dude. That's old school right there. Old school shit. Colorado, stand up. <laughs> They're all crusty all low key right there. <laughs> Not a lot of people know that, but it says it right there. Crusty. Chase Hartman drew this board. Amazing artist from Oceanside. Pink top. 8.5 bear by this is actually my shape. I should get it. And then uh, Chris Markovich is Chris Wiseman. Got my hometown some love right there. Simi Valley. ATM Oceanside Automatic Teller Machine. Oh, there it is. Uh, 55 is generally what I ride. This one. They came me a header card too, dude. Chris Wiseman. I'll actually, come on, come on, I can show you this thing. I was gonna kill me for this, but boom. So, um, yeah, let's show you the fucking wheel. Let's like actually show you the wheel. 
dude, yeah. Like, fucking blessed me, dude. Fucking sick. Can I show you how to run it? The, the first one never really rips correctly. So, there you go. This one should rip pretty good. So, and try and keep all the logos going good. This is pretty sick, dude. It's like two, four. Put the header card. Put the sticker. Slice and dice, dude. There you go. It's always good if you like poke holes, because then if you don't poke a hole, it just like blows up on you. So I usually poke like well, four. Always keep it moving. There you go. There's the finished fiber on it. There you go. And then with sticker size, you got 55, correct? And then we have our wheel. 55. If we're doing a lot, like a big quantity, we run it through this machine. We throw them in here, and it turns them out, dude, like thousands of wheels. This is for the decks. Turn this on. Put a deck in, put this in the foil, conveyor belt puts it in there, stops over there. And this one's actually uh, my shaped board. It's going to Zoomies. Thank you, Zoomies. You guys hooked it up. And it's stacked terribly because the board is shaped. So it's like, it's a nine and a half shape. This is a nine box. So it's really, so it's kind of slanted. But yeah, Zoomies, LNX. And the boards get printed here. This is LNX. We do business with LNX. Rod James, you're the shit. This is the machine that puts the graphics on. Generally, it takes a long time to start. Put it at 3.30, turn it on. Put the machine in there, green buns go, red buns out, get it, put it again, green bun go, red out. And then it's sketchy too, because you don't want to get your hands in there. But this thing, if you knee it, it just automatically comes up, which is really rad. No. This is where we keep uh, papers of nice day caches. I just got kicked out. This is transfer papers, ATM transfer papers, top graphics, pro graphics, shaped boards. That's my shape, Donovan's shape, Rex's shape. And then we have shovel nose. This is all of our shapes. So that one's, they hooked me up, dude. So right there, they hooked me up with like, there's like 50, but check this out, dude. This is, this is the crusty shape. So with Zoomies buying 300, it does really well. And I'll show you the ramp, dude. This out. It's pretty cool. We're getting inside, you know, or outside. Check this out. So we did. Oh, this is sick, dude. Alfonso Rawls came here one time and he sprayed all these red decks. And it was before, it was a year ago, so it wasn't this broken, but he would dry them through this. Apparently, this is what they used to dry painted boards back in the day. We did a lot of events with ATM that we got these ramps. We throw events like Flat Bar Friday, so pretty cool. Let's go say what up to the boss. Johnny, 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 Johnny. John, what made you want me on the team? And what made me stand out to you? Because you get a lot of sponsor me tapes. Well, yeah, no, I got three videos, I believe, two or three, and go back and forth. And then I believe we communicated over email and then James Martin knew who you were, too. Yeah, that's who it was, dude. James, James man. James James threw, uh, you know, his nudge in, his two cents, and they were positive. And so, okay, come on down. And then you get to meet the person, because you already know he's a good skater. And then now you want to see what is he like off the board. And it's been a blessing since then. Thank you to that. It has. We work really well together. Well, we do. We oh, do. Yeah. Well, you I don't know about that one. <laughs> what about now? What about these days? <laughs> All right, what's the next okay. question? Today, <laughs> today I gotta go. Um, I gotta cut some wheels for Markovich. I gotta go figure out. We gotta we gotta work on a new wheel for you. Um, Dude, hell yeah. No, no, you gotta do it. New. New. We gotta sell this one. No, there's not that many left. That's the, so. If we start working on it now, it's because I gotta do Markovich and then I want to do Krusty, and then I want to do Donovan, like have new. Hell yeah. You know, it's good to have new. 
And then there's some, one other guy I want to talk to about this project, too. Let's keep it on the low pro right now, though. I have to. But, yeah, this is it. This is what I do for a living. This is it. It's very kind of fucking like people make it. How can I say this? Um, I'm blessed to be in it this long, but also I'm blessed to know all the, all the guys I've met and hung out with and girls. And it's insane. They, uh, they just make you young. Yeah, I mean, you've been you've been hooking up from Christian Asoy to Tony Alva. Oh, before that. Uh, even before that? Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah, 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 78. So you're thinking like... That's crazy. Uh, Romoto and uh, Andrecht and uh, Stropo. What was the guy from Santa Monica? Uh, what was his name? Tone, Tonan? Tonan. Tonan. That was before Alva? No, no, no he was, was Alva. Alva. No, no, he was not. No, he worked with me. Tonan. In the garage. My, no, in my mom's garage or on, on Rosewood. I forget. Sadie. That's sick, man. Dude, you've been hooking up from those dudes to the Alva guys, to the Jamie Fortunes, to the Kareem Campbells, to the James Martins, to the Krusties, and you're still hooking up riders. You have to. That's crazy. You to. You've been hooking up for like four and a half, five generations of professional skaters. And? That's awesome. <laughs> you know, thanks for all the skaters that buy our product. We need them more than they need us. Because yeah. that's what gives us the opportunity to support these guys. Keep going, yeah. Um, and the stores, if you ever want to step up, call Glenn. Sadie, come up. All right, John, we're going to take up. Okay. We're going to take off. Thank you for your time. Well, thank and you. This is the local skate shop, Asylum Skate Shop. And some people just walked in, so I'm going to take a second to uh, set up a board. Or at least spray paint it. I feel like boards look better with spray painted edges. No disrespect to the artists that have made my pro model boards, but I love painting the sides of them. My goodness, there's cars here, so maybe I don't get the cops called on me like last time. It only like looks better. I think it looks way better when you do this shit. Dude, fucking sick, dude. It looks way better. And then this is the drying process. <laughs> Usually if you do it in the middle of the street, you get more, see, look, there's wind resistance and shit. How's it look? It's all right. Sick. How are you? This is Brendan Scott. He's a fucking great friend of mine. Best friend. Fucking okay, sick. Best friend right here. Good man. You can Google us, you'll find both of us too. Can we go in your shop? Let's fucking do this shit, dude. This is Asylum Skate Shop, Oceanside, California. Super sick. They got a skate juice, loser machine, ATM, acid, Jessup. Hey, what's going on, guys? What up? How are you guys doing? What up, man? I heard you guys are selling out of the wheels. Always. Yeah, we are. Fuck yeah. <laughs> a lot of history in this skate shop. I love this skate shop because you can see mystery skateboards, Billy Pepper, dude, all these gnarly ass skaters, Provost, all El Ellington 012, Jeff Rally. It's got a lot of history. A lot of history in the skate shop. It's really rad. They got right there, Ave, Alien Workshop. This is my favorite skate shop. It's fucking incredible. They got the whole team, Zero. They got OG Loser Machine Boards. What was it, Ernie Torres? Ernie Torres, audio and real skateboards, dude. That's classic, man. Let's go get some stickers. Hell yeah. I have two backpacks, uh, one for the ocean and one for skating. This one is the one for skating. Stickers. <laughs> we link it up today? Fuck yeah. Let's Six o'clock. Six ten. Six ten? Six ten. Do you guys have asylum stickers? Oh! The black one, the black one, the black one, the black one. Please, please, please. Yes, that one looks so <laughs> sick. Oh yeah. You have a razor blade? Just, it makes it like way more fun when it's like this.
Guys, thank you so much for fucking setting me up and best skate shop in town, dude. Seriously, thank you so much, guys. Hell yeah. I'll be the number one supporter of Asylum Skate Shop. Whenever. Ah, dude. Love you too, B. Scott. Later, Pat Benatar. Hell yeah. Woo. <laughs> Later, homie. Fuck yeah, guys. Oh, I'll see you guys soon. All right, hell yeah. Later on, boss. This is a gun I got from my brother. I think it was a Christmas present. I have a few, but this one's one of my favorites. To do is this. It took me forever to learn how to use it, but you gotta put it here, and then that. That's how long that, it took me a long time. Where am I aiming? Let's go for the chest. The chest. Fuck. <laughs> You want to try? It's fucking gnarly. Dude, they go through. I think that's enough fun for now. Hey, Jojo. I told you I would see you Thursday. I am here Thursday. This is Senor Grubby's. It's my local spot. My girlfriend works here. It's very organic. A lot of my homies cruise over here. It's kind of the spot to be at, you know? Great food. Great beer, Ryan downtown. This is my spot. Remind me your name. Oh my God, how could I forget? Here you go, man. Eight and a half, bareback wood too. Thank you. Enjoy it, man. Oh, Hell yeah. yes. Hell or this, dude. Killer. Later on, boss. Enjoy the board. Always gotta support the youth. Keep it pint. I didn't get blocked in, honey. No, because you parked in the only space where you wouldn't get blocked in. Here you go, gorgeous. Let's go in there. Watch your hair. All right. Cops come, yeah. <laughs> Holy fuck, dude. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta go. Cops are coming. <laughs> it's a long day, Tyler. Hell of a day in the life. A lot of fucking slams, dude. Skateboarding requires slams. We gotta go.
This is the room. These are my boards. <laughs> oh shit, you shot that. You shot that one. Oh, the nose one? And you shot this one. You shot both of these. This is Narlos. That's Narlos. McWathy. McWathy. Oh, fuck. Right under it. Not gonna shoot the train. They get pissed. Don't shoot the train. All right, ready? Bullseye right here, chest. Oh my God, I got it. I got two and one. I got I got double shot. I got one right under the last one. Stiggles, what's up, homeboy? I'm wrapping up at the house right now. I'm on my way to the ocean. Where are you at? Cool. I'll see you in a second. There's no one here. I thought everyone here. Jake's here. We're here. We'll be there in a sec. What's up, homeboy? What's up, brother? Dude, two and one. <laughs> Woo. We're about ahead of the ocean. You see that, right? Look at that. Look at that. What? All right, I'll see you in a second. We're there right now. Bye. Let's go, gentlemen and lady. Let's go. We all have to cross the street. All of us cross the street. We're here, round two. Ocean. I brought some team riders, the skate juice guys. Get it, Gibbons! Oh! Pound St. Gibbons. Hi, hi. How you doing? That's my guy. I'm jumping in the water right fucking now, dude. I had a long ass fucking day. I was supposed to be here like four hours ago. Thank you everyone for tuning in. I hope you guys had as much fun as I did today. Uh, thank you True Skateboard Mag for this opportunity and I'll catch you guys on the next session. Hell yeah, cheers. Lo puedo hablar en castellano. Gracias a todos que miran mi video de patineta y te veo la próxima vez. Adiós, Cristian. Dude, that was a fucking dope ass day in life, man. Thank you. Yeah, one, it was one, super fun. One question. And, and then you said something, you don't use deodorant and take showers? You use the ocean? To I take use showers? something today because now I'm being interviewed. You know, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to psych you out. But yeah, I mean, sometimes I just go to the ocean. I jump in the water so much. Uh -huh. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So it's like, why do I even need it? Yeah, that's awesome. I'm going to catch the ocean. You know? I mean, I, I stopped using deodorant after. I mean, I still use it once in a while if I go out with a girl or something. But I don't use it as much because I'm like, dude, like all the chemicals and shit. You I know? gotta say, dude, my blood, Nicaragua, I don't stink, man. Yeah. <laughs> it takes me a lot to stink. I do stink. It takes me a lot, though. <laughs> Nicaragua, man. That's fucking awesome, dude. And, dude. <laughs> yes. Congratulations turned pro, man. I know, uh, I know it's been like, a minute I know, ago. I know it's been a minute ago, but, yes. dude, I haven't oh, seen yeah. it in a minute. It's a great opportunity, and I'm so stoked that ATM, you know, they had, uh, you know, they had my back. And mm -hmm. I'm super stoked to be a part of the company, and, yeah. Dude, how did, how did it feel when they, what, how did it all come down, like, to you to turning you pro, man? That was crazy. Um, they proposed the idea to me, John Fowley proposed the idea to me in his office, and um, yeah, I was totally down. I said, yeah, let's do it. I'm going to work very hard for my uh, Skate Juice Truth to Power part. 
mm -hmm. which is the part that I was uh, supposed to turn pro for. But I turned pro for uh, the debauchery two that Kevin Furman filmed, mm -hmm. and he was a videographer in my hometown, and it was way, it was way better that way. All my friends, you know, were there, and it was hometown, hometown yeah. friends. Oh yeah. So that was the part. It came out December second, two thousand eighteen, and my Truth to Power part came out around March two thousand nineteen. So it was. It's very shortly after. Oh yeah, dude. And and tell and tell us about these boards right here. Did, tell I, me the, yeah. tell me your first ones. This second. one's the first one. This okay. one's the one that came out 2018, late 2018, and um, yeah, we didn't get sued. <laughs> so that's always a plus. And then this one, dude, Chris Markovich uh, drew this artwork for me. Uh, it was 2019. Okay. It had to be 2019, around uh, July. July, I think we we promoted it and. Um, yeah, it is a great artwork. I love Dude, it. That's you such know, good artwork. A, man. I stole. I couldn't get a new one that I and, and plus skated this one. And know? plus having Chris Markovich do a pro, pro graphic for you, man. I mean, I looked up to that guy since Blind What If. You yeah. know, even in the intro, he's getting chased by those cops. And Christian was always like, "Yo, Markovich, you know, I'm just one. Well, my son wants to see the Blind video." And he's like, "Oh shit!" And then it starts. <laughs> what if Switch Trade on Triple Set? I remember that. Corey dude. Shepard, you know, like yeah. I've looked up to Markovich my whole entire life, so. Even with Tony Hawk trick tips, I think Markovich had a, a segment in it. Dude, that's so it's incredible that he, yeah, man. It's all thanks to ATM Click. He gave my hometown some love, Simi Valley, Oceanside, California. Yeah. Yeah, man. John Fallon, he, he, he lined this up. You know, I would have never met Markovich if it weren't for John Fallon. Hell yeah, hell yeah, dude. And then th these are your newer ones right here? These are the new ones. They came out uh, when my Skate Juice 3 video part came out. Okay. The same, like the very next day or the day of. This one, uh, Markovich did this one again. The shrooms, and it's a shape, 9.5, and it has a shorter wheelbase. I think it's like 14 and a quarter, so like Damn. tray flips work on it. Damn. It's not like 14, 7.5, where it's a little bit too long. So yeah, I like the shorter wheelbase, you know, uh, shovel nose. It's sick, man. Zoomies just bought 300. 300? 300, yeah. Fuck they yeah. Uh, anted up their 50. Thank you, Zoomies. You guys rip. <laughs> Catch it at your local Zoomie store, September Hell 2022. Yeah, dude. dude, that's and sick. And then this one is uh, Ladies of Fate. You know, uh, Chase Hartman, he's actually my neighbor. He uh, drew this one up, Chris Wiseman. And then it's low key right here. Look, Tommy. Dude, that's sick. <laughs> like all low key, you know. <laughs> Only the people that know if they get this deck to see that. Yeah. I ain't gonna even spoil the surprise for you. Go get the deck and then you'll see. <laughs> uh, yeah. ATM, they're all ATM click. That's awesome, man. And Eight then, years with the company. Eight years? Eight years, yeah, this December. Damn, congratulations years. on that, dude. That's, Thank you. That's Thank sick. Thank you so much. And, and you also, too, you ride for Acid Wheels, too, right? Yes, I do. I was one of the first Acid Riders that started in 2017, and I love the name. Last Chemical Co. I was super down with it. Yeah. They proposed the idea, and Kevin Fallahy was my team manager at the time. And the wheels were sick. They had sick logos. They had sick graphics. I was like, hell yeah, let's run it. Yeah. And uh, now that I have, yeah. yeah, dude, they just gave me a pro wheel. What? My first one. That's sick. Dude. First pro wheel. Dude, oh, that's super like that. stoked. Last Chemical Co. It matches the shrooms. You know, <coughs> mushrooms are in. Goes perfectly with the board. I actually did an ad for this yesterday. <laughs> that's why, yes, that's why it's like that. Usually, I don't, you know, it's still a little bit too much rooms, but yeah. I was doing a skit with it, and it should be out soon. And, and I'm going to go back a little bit into your um, day in life with this one little question I'm going to ask you. So, you, you surf a lot and skate a lot. So, does that I help you? I skate a lot more. Oh, you skate a lot more. But, I mean, does, does the surfing help out with your skating, or does skating help out with your surfing? Dude, honestly, surfing is so gnarly. Mm -hmm. It no that's like you gotta really get in i'm a skateboarder you know as far as like even going out there uh -huh. to catch that wave that's already a task in itself you yeah. know so my my father is he's like a semi-professional windsurfer he still windsurfs to this day my brother my older brother is a phenomenal uh surfer windsurfer so i could proudly say that i do not do it like that. they're <laughs> gnarly with that so i just stick to the skating i go for the ocean more for uh Rehabilitation, uh, physical therapy. This knee is pretty shot out. This ankle has torn ligaments. This one always gives me grief. So yeah, yeah. I jump in the ocean a lot. I'm the block away. You can find me at the rock. <laughs> That's where I go to the ocean. Yeah. And a couple questions before we take off. Um, what's? Do you have anything coming up? Any new projects? I any, do. 
Okay. I do, I do. I'm working on a new project with Skate Juice. Um, I think it's, I don't want to say too much into it, but we, we have a lot of guys that are really trying really hard, and our videographer, Hydroplane, Brent Hyden, is, he's working really hard on it. And it would be, I mean, he's made a lot of skate videos. Oh, yes, so yes. It's probably to him, it's his seventh, sixth or seventh full length. Yeah. For me personally, this is going to be my tenth video part. Mm -hmm. So I, it's not going to be the gnarliest, you know, but it, I'm going to have some hits in it. Okay. I'm excited. I'm trying really hard for it. It's at this day and age, I've been doing it for such a long time, like yeah. professionally, and the stunts it takes, like my body's pretty through the ringer. I do physical therapy. I'm just trying to reinvent my skating in a different way. Oh, yeah. And do you got any like pro parts coming out, like new pro wheel or new pro video wheel parts? More or? promotional videos these okay. days with Instagram and uh, even I hate to say it, but TikTok. TikTok, right? Really? I hate to say are, it. Are yeah. you on TikTok? I have to be. Really? You know, yeah, I have to be. You know, well, why you say that? Like, can I ask you? I'm more of a core kind of guy, you know, core VX1000, Fisheye, MK1, like yeah. that's the stuff I grew up on, you know, but you know, I see where the times are these days and yeah, I had to get a big social media prep, you know, presentation, yeah. you know, endorse the sponsors that I'm writing for. So yeah, I, had, I have TikTok. I don't even know my username. I'm still using, I think it's Krusty underscore Wiseman. I, I really don't know. My Instagram's Krusty underscore. Okay. I love Instagram. That is super fun to post. Oh, it is, man. I got a lot of guys using it, so it's, yeah. It's a tight knit, it's a tight knit market. You know what I mean? You can it like. It is, you know, and all my sponsors that I'm, you know, supporting and repping, they kind of rely on my social media presence. You yeah. know, if I'm not posting on Instagram, it's like, why even sponsor the dude? And you know, this day and age, I see it. I wouldn't sponsor a guy either. He doesn't have an Instagram, you're off the team. Yeah. I don't care how gnarly you are. Sorry uh, for the <laughs> skaters. You know, Wes Kramer, you're my favorite skater. I think Jake Johnson doesn't yeah. have one. You know, you guys are the shit. You guys already have it lined up. Yeah. But I'm saying for the new guys coming up, like you have to really put your mark. You know, no disrespect to the guys yeah. that don't have Instagram. I envy that, you know? Yeah. And, and you ride for also too for a, a dope ass Southern uh, California clothes brand. Uh, loser machine. I do. Tell us, tell us a little bit about that. That was gnarly, dude. I, I love Adrian Lopez. Um, his skateboarding, you know, I've watched. It's time. The zero videos. He, the misled youth. Yeah. His part was one of my favorite trans world videos. Like yeah. I'm an Adrian Lopez fan, so I've already known his name for my whole entire yeah. life. You know, and I, I had a team rider. I still have a team rider, James Mark. Okay. I, I moved out, so he's in Camarillo. Ventura now. Okay. He's the gnarliest skater ever. Super great surfer. And he rode Loser Machine. And he'd always have the sickest, like, it'd be like a flip off. It was insanely sick. And, you know, he had the sleeves with the logos. And, you know, I asked him, like, yo, man, let me get on Loser Machine. And he just straight up said it, like, yo, Crusty, you're going to have to do that yourself. Really? Yeah, Adrian's <laughs> top dog, man. He's not going to, I'm not going to take, you know, I'll take a word for it, but, like, you got to prove your, your word. And um, it was a contest. I was getting flow by uh, Chris Seguino okay. at an active ride shop. I think now he works for Brixton. He's killing it. Chris Seguino, you're the man. So I was getting flow active. And then I went to a contest where you had to pay money to skate. Tommy, I ain't paying money to skate. <laughs> I didn't have any money at the time. Yeah. You know, it was still now, you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, I'm not paying money. Brent, hide it. Sickest guy. He looks at me. He looks at me. Like, you and me. He's like, you're just going to sit here? Go talk to him. He's talking about Adrian. Go talk to him. I'm like, nah, man, I can't. Like, I can't. He's like, all right, let's sit here with me and watch the skater skate. I'm like, dude, I, I oh, all right, fuck, I'm gonna go talk to him. So I go over to Lopes and I'm like, hey, man, like, what's going on? James Warren, he's my friend, like, this and that. Chris Aguino's giving me some clothes. It's just kind of going nowhere. It was just like, yeah, cool, like, nice to see you. Like, I'm kind of busy. And I just say, like, hey, man, you think I escaped the contest? Like, he looked at me like a, a, a breath of fresh air. He's like, oh, what? Yeah, go ski the contest. Go, 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 tell them. You go tell them I have a free entry. You get in there. Yeah. So I waltz over there. I'm like, hey, I got a free entry. Uh, Lopes said yeah. it was okay. And they're just like, oh, yeah, here, fill this out. I'm like, oh, is that easy? So I signed, you know, it's a lot of legal uh, hospital, you know, in case you get smoked. Yeah, yeah. You have to, you know. So I wrote Christian Wiseman. I sign it in. Here you go. He's doing his thing. I'm practicing. Heat one. Really? Dominic Walker. Kick flip nose grinds the 12 stair handrail. Nolly heel flip crooked grinds it. This is heat one. 
I think Tommy Sandoval backside, no, he's regular stance. So he backside heel flipped over the chain to, it was gnarly. This is first heat. And I'm like, dude, I'm gonna get chomped out. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get smoked. Second heat. They say it, it was Jamie Stone. I love you, Jamie Stone. You're so responsible for this, for getting me on loser machine. He goes, Christian Wiseman. And I go, oh, nah, 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 nah. I skate over to this guy. He's a big dude, Jamie yeah. Stone. He's a big dude, so I poke him. He's got the mic. He's like, fuck you want? I'm like, yo, man, I'm Christian Wiseman. Like, call me Krusty. This dude, he ate it up. He looked at me, he sees a loser machine shirt. He's like, Krusty from Loser Machine just straight up says it right what? there. I freeze. I'm like, oh fuck, dude. No, I don't man. ride for Loser Machine. Like, fuck. Yeah. So I go up to my station, like, ready to, ready to perform. 10 minute jam. Yeah. And this guy says it again. All right, we got everyone. Whoa, 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 whoa. Who's Christian Wiseman? And I'm like, hey, what the fuck? Like, and he's like, all right, Krusty, Krusty. And I'm like, oh, this is bad. This is bad, dude. I got 10 minutes to, like, make or break, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 10 minutes start now. Within two minutes, I don't know how it happened. You know, yeah. during practice, you should have seen me. I was fuck. Yeah. I was blowing up everywhere. The two minutes in, Switch Big boarded the Ring Con replica, which I did the real one. Yeah. So this one came in two minutes. I landed. Wow. First high five, Dominic Walker. <laughs> I'm like, you're kidding. <laughs> oh my God. This dude, James Stone, ate it up. Damn. Fuck yeah, crossed it. Yeah, crossed and like, <laughs> In the jam, it was a bunch of gnarly. I had my homie J-Man, he's 270 lip in the 12 rail. Cody Jacobson is half cap front, feebling the rail. Yeah. Like, it's a heated session. So like, shit, I got eight minutes. What the fuck do I do? Yeah. I use my inhaler, I got asthma. Yeah, yeah. Let's go switch beaks, me heel flip board side the 12. Yeah. I keep trying it. The whole time I'm trying it, you know, clock's ticking. And Jamie Stone's just making jokes, man. Like, yo, crust. San Diego wants to see that crust. And I'm like, dude, this dude is the shit. He says it like 30 seconds. And I go for a try and I eat shit. He's like, run back up. He says it 10 seconds. Yeah. And I look over and all these riders are going, going, going. I'm like, all right, oh. he said 10 seconds. I'm going to chill. Everyone goes. I look over and I see Cody Jacobson. And I'm like, this is it, man. Throw down, I don't even remember, a switch, big swing, heel flip, board slide, landed. Baker makered out, and they counted it. What? Like crazy, and I'm no like, all oh, hyped. I turn around, the dude I just looked at, full cabs over the rail, wins first place. <laughs> One first place. Dominic Walker second, T-Guns did third, yeah. and I'm guessing me and uh, Villanueva, who did 50-50 kickflip, whatever it was, yeah, yeah. we tied for whatever for yeah, yeah. Right after the whole experience, Lopes, just right up, like, I need your phone number. I give him my phone number, he's like, I'm gonna hit you up for a shoot, I'm gonna send you a box, and uh, we go from there. And oh, the first yeah. shoot was the Oceanside Hubba. Oh, hell and yeah. I've skated that thing a bunch, and um, I've been trying really hard for this company, and I'm so glad we're, we're boys now. But that was how I got on. James Martin was not wrong about that like crusty yeah. you have to do it for yourself yeah like i ain't gonna give you like an email and you fucking like i'll hook you up with that but like if you're gonna get on his squad you yeah. have to do it yourself hell yeah so that was that was the story congratulations on it i man. was stoked man and they put me on a bunch of catalogs i think i'm on a oh i can't say too much because i have a video project <laughs> no, don't say out. it don't say it but they have me on a photo of a banner doing he's doing it i'm doing a trick but yeah. i can't say the trick because footage isn't released yet <laughs> nah it's, come on man it's skateboarding it's Hell so yeah. fun Hell like yeah. i it'll love be, skateboarding. It'll be on instagram pretty soon what was that? They'll probably be on Instagram pretty soon. Oh, no, 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 they won't. No, 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 no. You're like, no, no, no. I'm going to, no, dude, it was sick. Like, no, I'm going to save it for the video part. And I I can't say too much. I don't want to say too much. You know, I don't want to say when our project's coming out. What I can say is we have a lot of great skateboarders and a lot of great people working very hard on this project. I don't want to say a due date so far because we're just feeling it out, you know? That's awesome. It's a great film. Fuck and yeah. the people we're working with, it's crazy that I'm still here and not arrested. You know, <laughs> hanging out with these guys, it's like every day I'm with cops, every day I'm skating a roof, I'm yeah. stealing something to skate the roof, and like just crazy. Like, yeah. I can't even believe, like, oh my God, knock on wood. <laughs> these guys are going, they're going crazy, you know. But that's part of it, you know, yeah. that's part of skateboarding, yeah. you know. You're, 
rats didn't destroy, you know? <laughs> like that, come on, I grew up on that. You know? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And then one last question. Hit me. What, what can you say to the upcoming skaters? What, what good a advice bunch, can you give? A bunch to the upcoming skaters. First and foremost, attitude. And, you, and everyone's good at skating. Let's mm. fucking look on it. Oh, sorry, can I curse on yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look on Instagram. You'll see the gnarliest skating by some eight-year-old kid. Mm. And he, he's doing a 900. Everyone's yeah, good at skating. Yeah. My advice for future skateboarders trying to do this and get sponsored, I wouldn't talk to you if you didn't even have a good attitude. Mm -hmm. Have a good attitude, that's the way in the door. Yep. Straight up, have a good attitude, show up on time, clean up your mess. You know, I went, I went through a lot to, to get on ATM, you know, and my team managers were, they were gnarly. Yeah. They, they would not, they would leave me, they, or they never left me. I'm, they never left me, but they would leave me yeah. if I was acting up, like, all right, kid, like, later. Damn. So my advice, you know, everyone's gnarly at skating. Just have a very good attitude. Be helpful, be supportive, always be supportive. Look out for a car for, if you're homie skating one. Yeah. Uh, clean up your trash if you're in a hotel room. Uh, show up early to the van. It's all personality yeah. at this point. I'd say 60s. 60% personality, probably even more. 70% personality with me, 30% you're skating. I already know you rip. You wouldn't have ripped if you, uh, we wouldn't even be talking. Yeah. He rips, obviously. Or she, yeah. you know? Either she or. or he, either or. As long as your personality is rad, yeah. you have you have my attention. Oh yeah. That's, that's what that, I, that's, that's my 100% advice. true. 100% true, man. Your personality, attitude, whatever. Totally. It's, it goes far. Totally. Does not with skateboarding, everything. Man. I got some stories, man. I got right, some tell, tell us one story. Tell you one story. One story before we take off. Uh, what, what do you want to hear? I got what, a lie. What, what, what are we the, talking the, about? The, the, My story. team managers were the gnarliest stunt I watched. The gnarliest story. <sighs> gnarliest story, I don't think I can tell you, but I will tell you a gnarly <laughs> story. Right, I feel right. like I owe him the credit. His name's James Martin. Oh shit. And yeah, I have a lot of stories about James Warren. A lot of good ones. That guy is a great, he's a great person. And he's done a lot for me. Um, we talked about the rink off, the Switch Bixman board yeah, yeah. slide. We originally go there, the second time coming back, and um, I get kicked out. Security guards there, get the hell out, so we leave. So we go across the street, and some big rail dude, like 32 stair handrail, with a kink. James is board sliding, landing on the pavement. Like he is sticking it, but he sees that the sun is going down. Yeah. And he looked at me, he looked at the sun, he looks at the rail, and he just says it like, no, nah, we came here for Krusty. I'm over it. Let's go to Krusty's spot. What that sick. to me was That's like, right. you just stuck it. Why would, yeah, let's go to my spot. <laughs> so we go to Ring Hall. He gave up on the board slide. He's a great dude. And we go to Ring Con, and I don't know what he was doing, but I started trying the trick. I don't know what he was doing. He's probably on his phone with Holly, but he's on the field. Everyone's down there, but he's, for some reason, he's in the grass, and he just yells it. Right here, Krusty. And I look at James. I'm like, right here, right here. That was the mate. Switch big board landed it. Since I talked about it in the day in the life, yeah. James Martin was, and it got dark 10 minutes after that. Yeah. James, that guy is, to me, to my book, that guy is the most, uh, he, he's, my, he's my hero, you know? Yeah. He's someone I looked up to, still to this day, yeah. I look up to that guy my whole entire life. You yeah. know, since I was, since I was playing tag at Skate Lab, and he's, hey kid, get the hell out of the way, I'm trying to big spin front board this rail, move, and I'm like, I'm so sorry. I've looked up to him my whole life. That's fucking that's, awesome. That's one story. He that's gave up a 34 stair kink rail for me to land that Dude, trick. That's mad respect. And I have a lot of stories that. about that guy. That's mad respect. How much time do I got? Can I tell another one? Oh, like, we tell another one. What's one? I love these stories. Tell one more. What do you want to hear? Like, oh, oh man, I don't, I don't know. Like your craziest, I mean, road trip or something crazy with skate juice, filming with skate juice. Or... Oh, there's a lot crazy. Let's talk about the head hit. There you go. Let's talk about the head hit. There you go. I was on that. I was killing it. You know, I was scanning the spots. I was doing the ocean side hubbas over nose one front big board, same day. Uh -huh. Next day, I felt like I could skate. You know, I like nothing can go wrong. <laughs> and that's what you guys got to learn. Skateboarding humbles you. Yeah. And it humbled me big time. I thought I could land every single trick I tried. Yeah. And the next day, I'm scanning this thing, gets twirly and got pissed, hit my head. Do not recall this at all. 
but the people I was with, the friends I was with, and the, they, they made it awesome. They made the whole experience a lot easier. Instantly got knocked out, Damn. broke the collarbone, cracked two ribs, Ooh. and one of the ribs punctured my lung. Damn. It was gnarly. I wake up, open my eyes, and it's like looking through cracked glass. It was yeah. the gnarliest thing ever. I couldn't see. Yeah. You know, if I'm looking at you, Tommy, I can't see the camera, I can't see the wall, I'm just looking at you. It was yeah, so, insane. So, so you should have a tunnel right there, It huh? was so gnarly. Damn. And I don't know what happened, so yeah. I'm like grabbing it, and all the homies are like, you're good, you're good, like, let's get him to the hospital. And I uh, went to the hospital, and they gave me a CAT scan, MRI, and they're like, yeah, dude, you got smoked. That, wow. that humbled me. So, yeah, skateboarding, never take it for granted, and it can, it can humble you really quickly. Even when you feel like you're, I did two NBDs in Oceanside, Alba, and the next day I'm about to die skateboarding. It's a very humbling thing, yeah. and I'm very stoked to uh, have this interview with you and skateboarding rules. Hell yeah. Well, thank you for coming on the show, brother. And thank you for doing it in life, man. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, dude. And congratulations to everything that, that you have done in life, man. Thank you, man. And this is a wrap for TSM Live Show, Season 5, Episode 8. I'm your host, Tommy Zam. I want to say thank you to Belgian Beaver for allowing us to film this episode here. Check them out, out in Oceanside, California. I want to say thank you for our sponsors for making this, this season happen. I want to say thank you for all of our guests for coming on TS, to True Skateboard Mag Live Show, Season 5, Episode 8. Tune in next month for Season 5, Episode 9, because that shit's going to be dope as fuck. Peace! How did I do? You did great. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> ready, ready, start two. Oh, those are the guys that are yeah. in the skate juice video. Yeah. These are the gentlemen that try very, very hard. They're right over there. There they are, they're all right there. Hey, am I off camera? I'm, I'm off good. camera. Can we go smoke weed? I'm going to go smoke some weed. Go smoke some weed, dude.